All right, so today we're gonna start chapter nine, which is cellular reproduction. The main idea of this chapter is that cells grow until they reach their size limit, then they either stop growing or they divide. So let's start by looking at cell size. So cells are less than 100 micrometers. Why do you think cells are so small? So there are a few factors um, that contribute to the cell size limit. However, the key factor is surface area to volume ratio. So surface area, it's the area covered by the plasma membrane, and the volume is just the space that's taken up by the inner contents of the cell. So as a cell grows, the volume increases much more rapidly than the surface area. So it's beneficial for a cell to have a high surface area to volume ratio, um, meaning just to have a small sized cell. This way, it's easier for the cell to sustain itself um, through supplying nutrients and expelling waste products. A second factor is the transport of substances. So different substances move inside the cell by either the process of diffusion or by motor proteins. However, diffusion over large distances is both slow and inefficient. So by maintaining a small cell size, um, it's much more effective to transport substances throughout the cell, either by diffusion or motor proteins. And finally, the third factor that contributes to cell size limitations is cellular communications. So inside the cell, there are signaling proteins and they help with communication and they communicate instructions for certain cellular functions. So for example, if a cell becomes too large, um, signals that trigger protein synthesis might not reach the ribosome fast enough for protein synthesis to occur in order to sustain the cell. Um, therefore, once again, a smaller cell size is preferred. So once the cell reaches its size limit, it must do one of two things. So one, it can stop growing, or two, it has to divide. And most cells eventually divide. Um, cell division prevents cells from becoming too large, and it's how we produce new cells in our bodies. So when we're talking about the process of our cells dividing, we're talking about the cell cycle. So each of us started life as a single cell. So a fertilized egg is called a zygote. And an adult human being is made up of approximately 37.2 trillion cells. So you started off life as one single cell. By the time you reach adulthood, you're up to 37.2 trillion cells. So how does that happen? So this happens throughout the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is a series of events that take place in a cell as it grows, copies its DNA, and divides to form two identical cells. Um, this process is also called asexual reproduction. Um, the big thing you need to know from this slide is that you're making two brand new identical cells. Before a cell can divide, it must make sure that each daughter cell will receive all the cell organelles. And daughter cell is just the name of the two new cells that will be produced throughout the cell cycle. In addition, each daughter cell needs a copy of all the instructions needed to function. These instructions are encoded in DNA as genes. A big part of cell division focuses on copying the DNA and sorting it so that each daughter cell gets one copy of every gene in the original cell. So there are three main stages of the cell cycle. The first stage is called interphase. The second stage is mitosis. And the third stage is cytokinesis. The first stage of the cell cycle is called interphase. So interphase occurs between cell divisions and cells are in interphase approximately 90% of the time. And then during interphase, the cell grows and develops into a mature functioning cell. And 
The cells will get ready for cell division. So they're producing all the materials necessary for growth and the duplicating of the DNA is starting to happen. Interphase can be broken up into three different stages. Those stages are G1, which stands for GAP1, S, which stands for synthesis, and G2, which stands for GAP2. So the first stage of interphase is called G1, which stands for GAP1. So this is the period immediately after the cell divides. It can also be characterized by growth and development. Okay, this is where the cell just carries out its normal cell functions, and it's starting to prepare to replicate the DNA. Um, enzymes required for S phase are made in this phase also. So the second stage of interphase is called S, which stands for synthesis. Um, this is the period which the chromosomes, okay, or the DNA is replicated. Replicated just means copied. Chromosomes are what contain the genetic info. And then chromatin, it's just the relaxed form of DNA. And so each chromosome is replicated, creating two identical structures called sister chromatids. And sister chromatids are joined together at a point called the centromere. So let's take a look at this picture over here. This whole thing would be called the chromosome, okay, so it kind of makes this X figure. All of the squiggly lines in here, you see, that's the DNA. So DNA, um, when it's just like really relaxed and spread out, we call it chromatin, but then when it condenses, it's going to form this X-like figure, okay, and that's when we call it a chromosome. And then each side of the chromosome is called the sister chromatid, okay, so one half is a chromatid, this half is the other chromatid. And then you see this like little red dot in the middle. They're joined together at this point and that's what we call the centromere. All right, again, here's another image of a chromosome. Um, so here the whole thing again is the chromosome, the middle attachment, that's what we call the centromere. And then each side, this is one sister chromatid. This is a second chromatid. And then finally, the third stage of interphase is called G2. So this is when the cell prepares for division of its nucleus. Um, and so the cell takes inventory and makes sure it's ready for the next stage, which is called mitosis. Um, so in order to get ready for mitosis, the cell has to synthesize some organelles and other materials. And then the cell also double checks the chromosome copies for any sort of errors. All right, so here's a diagram of the cell cycle, okay? Um, so here's interphase. So interphase is made up of G1, S, and G2. And if you notice, it takes up most of the circle, and that's because cells spend most of their time, or about 90% of their time in interphase, okay? Um, so we're getting ready to divide in mitosis, and then after mitosis, it's cytokinesis. All right, so what happens after interphase? So after the cell has grown, it's replicated its DNA, and now it's ready to divide, then the process of mitosis begins. So mitosis is the process during which the cell's nucleus divides into two identical nuclei. And then mitosis is followed by cytokinesis, which is the process in which the cell's cytoplasm divides, and then two new daughter cells are created. So this is where we're going to stop on the notes today, and then next time we will talk about mitosis and cytokinesis.